All right, so we're on today. We're live and uh, and uh, we're in a new in a new situation, a new uh, relationship in our office, and trying to maneuver and rechange, uh, re rechange, re uh, maneuver some things and uh, uh, shift some things around. And I appreciate you bearing with us, and uh, we'll wait and see if, see who's online. We have anybody on line with us yet? And uh, it's reconnecting. Uh, those of you that are watching by YouTube, you can see that we're still uh, working with our uh, camera system. We're still working with our broadcast system to uh, make sure that everything is uh, is good and um, give folks an opportunity to get on, be a part of our Sabbath service. All, Richardson. all right, praise the Lord. Well, we got some folks joining us today. We appreciate you being here. And uh, shalom and happy Sabbath to you. We uh, uh, are thankful for another, another uh, almost year. Uh, the month, the year of 2017 is almost gone. And uh, it's just amazing as to how fast this year has flown by. Uh, we are so thankful to have been a part of your lives and you being a part of ours. Uh, with the transition from Kansas back to North Carolina about six months ago, five, six months ago. Uh, and uh, so we're so thankful uh, for the opportunity that we've had to serve you and uh, that you've been a part of, of what we're trying to do here. So we do we do welcome you to our broadcast today. And we hope the Lord uh, richly blesses you is our prayer. Uh, been uh, out in the mountains of Georgia all week this week. And uh, treacherous, good, good, good. Uh, uh, Oh wow! There's light. That's wonderful. That's uh, pray, praise the Lord for that. And I'll just leave that one on. Uh, we're still working with some things, trying to maneuver uh, in our office and make some make some adjustments. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, bear bear with us. Uh, my camera person is kind of walking all all around the room, adjusting light. And uh, so uh, we do uh, appreciate having somebody behind the scenes. Uh, but uh, been in the mountains of Georgia this week and a uh, beautiful country treacherous roads just just I'm definitely not a mountain person uh, I did, decided if I lived there uh, I would probably be like a mountain goat but uh, beautiful country met some nice folks uh, got a chance to be with some nice people uh, met some believers uh, some fellow followers of Yeshua Messiah and uh, we're so thankful for the opportunity that the Father has given us to meet folks along the way and so we're going to get right right to the to the service today. We're going to do some singing. If you've got your Bible, I want you to sing along with us. We'll be singing out of the Psalms and out of the uh, out of the Gospels today. And we're going to start off with Psalm 19 and verse number 14. Psalm chapter number 19 and verse number 14. Uh, and we'll be singing, uh, <laughs> "Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be right in Thy sight, O Lord." Psalm 19. And verse number 14. Sing along with me if you will. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be right in thy sight, O Lord. O Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be right in thy sight, O Pull that down right there. Pull the video monitor down. Pull pull the video monitor down. Video monitor down. Flip it down. Oh. And look at it and zoom me in just a little bit more, if you will. Let's go to Psalm chapter number 92. Psalm chapter number 92. And we'll sing, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to sing praise to thy name almost high. Psalm chapter number 92. Ah, oh, that's a little, little bit better. Here we go. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to sing praises to thy name almost high. To show forth thy love and kindness. 
to show forth thy faithfulness every morning and every night. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to sing praises to thy name. Psalm chapter number 96. <clears throat> Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, bless His holy name, show forth His salvation from day to day. Psalm chapter number 96, 1 and 2. We'll go over, actually over to the epistles, to 1 Peter chapter number 2, and we'll sing, Ye are a chosen generation, <clears throat> ye are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. got your Bibles today, turn in your Bibles to the book of 
1 John in chapter number 3 and we're going to get right into the teaching time back that zoom up just a hair yep just a hair um, <clears throat> still working on our on our camera getting things in uh, in good working condition trying to buy a new camera something that's a little more professional I'm using uh, one that I use for my work and uh, so I mean it does it does okay for what it is but uh, uh, it would do better if I had to, if I had a different camera um, in the book of first John I want to talk about today on what is sin what is sin um, the Bible says in first John chapter number three and verse number four says whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law now we live in a society in America uh, a great country wonderful people uh, wonderful things uh, take place in our country but there's also some things that that happen within the confines of our country and within the confines of Christianity in our country that go contrary to Scripture for example we make our own sins and we make our own laws based upon our own tradition based upon our own culture and based upon our own preconceived notions and the things that we like and dislike the Bible is very clear that God's law, God's commandments, God's instructions, Yahweh's instructions, His Torah, which means instruction, is very clear. And that it is our responsibility to follow His instructions and His guidelines uh, in order that we not commit sin. Now, granted, we're sinners by nature, and so therefore we're going to commit sin, we're going to fail, we're going to fall by the wayside. But for us to to not practice sin would be the operation of our faith, to walk out our faith in obedience uh, to God's Word. Uh, when we talk about sin, though, we talk about a breaking or a transgressing of the law. Uh, in the book of Romans, chapter number 3 and verse number 23, these are all real familiar verses of Scripture. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible simply says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Elohim or the glory of God. All have sinned. In the, in the same chapter, back in verse number 10 of chapter 3 of Romans, it says, As is written, there's none righteous, there's no not one, there's none that understandeth, there's none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there's none that doeth good, no not one. And so when you talk about sin, all of us are in the category of sinners. You can't get, you can't get around it, you can't get past it. The simple fact that that which is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble and we are sinners by nature. The Bible also says in the book of Romans, chapter number 5, and verse number 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world... And death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And so there again we see what the Bible teaches about us being sinners. Chapter number 6 of Romans and verse number 23, the Bible simply says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Master or our Lord. We see in the Word of God, though, many times Christians in today's society, evangelistic Christians, I appreciate evangelism, but they use the Romans road and they try to bring someone into the, the relationship with, uh, with Yeshua uh, through the Romans road, and that's all fine and good by showing one's nature as a sinner without giving them their responsibilities in order that they may follow God's commandments and follow God's laws. Uh, and according to his way, not according to our own way. When we consider what sin is, and we consider that, that uh, uh, sin was uh, from the beginning of our time, uh, that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and they brought sin upon all of mankind. 
We also find there back in the in the book of First John chapter number three and and verse number verse number eight says, "He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh, or the Son of God, was manifested; he might destroy the works of the devil, or the works of Satan, or the works of Lucifer." When we consider uh, sin and understand sin, if we do not have a scriptural view of sin's nature, then we cannot have a scriptural view of sin's remedy. Let me say that again. If we do not have a scriptural view of sin's nature and what sin is, that sin is a transgression of God's law. Sin is a violation of God's commandments and God's instructions. Remember what Paul said in the book of Timothy. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is probable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Doctrine or doctrine means instruction, same word used for Torah or law in the, in the word of God. If we don't understand and have a scriptural view of sin's nature, then we cannot have a scriptural view of sin's remedy. Yahweh has prepared a remedy for sin, and that remedy is in His Son, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, that we who believe on Him and put our faith and trust in Him, not just believing in our mind, but believing in our actions, we show our faith by our works, according to Brother James. We show our, our faith by our love for God's law and God's commandments, according to Brother John, that sin's remedy is found in the person of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, of course, modern culturalists would remove the terminology that uh, uh, so many of us use, uh, uh, redemption by the blood, ruined by the fall, the word lost. No one wants to be considered lost or or the, no one wants to, to be considered a sinner. I preached last week uh, on the topic of relativism, and many times sin in our culture is based upon relativism. Whatever is sin to you may not necessarily be sin to me, based upon a rel relativistic mindset. So when we look at the Word of God, sin is worldwide. Sin is part of our human nature. But yet we can't remove that because it is what we are. We are sinners by nature and sinners by the flesh. No matter how it's dressed or camouflaged, sin is still sin. It's still wrong to break God's commandments. Now there are those within the confines of modern religion that would say that we don't have to we don't have to, to obey the commandments of, uh, of God because they're fulfilled in Jesus and so therefore we don't have to uh, uh, we don't have to do the commandments of God. But if we don't have to do the commandments of God and the commandments of God and the law of God is no longer valid, then there means that, the, that means that there's no longer any sin. Because the Bible, uh, uh, many, 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 many years after the, the resurrection of Yeshua, uh, John wrote in 1 John chapter number 3 and verse number 4 that, that sin is a transgression of the law. And so if Christ abolished the law on the cross of Calvary, then therefore there's no more sin. And so therefore all the passages that I just read are no longer valid because we're no longer sinners. We're no longer have a sin nature because Yeshua died on the cross of Calvary and gave his life for us that we could have eternal life. And so therefore no more law, no more commandments because he fulfilled all that. Do you know, do you, do you hear how ridiculous that sounds? Just because Christ came and, and, and fulfilled the sacrificial law in order that we may be free from the law of sin and death does not remove our responsibility to obey God's law and God's commandments in order that we not be practicing sinners. When we consider well, what sin is, no matter how we dress it or no matter how we camouflage it, it's still sin. We, when we don't take sin seriously then there becomes no shame in our sin. That's why we have a culture in our society that is proud of their sin, proud of their anarchy, proud of their lawlessness. Look at the LGBTQZBRMSTU crowd that they want to justify their sin and they want to be proud of their sin 
and they want to have glory in their sin is because we have no shame in our sin. It used to be a shame to speak of these things in public. It used to be a shame to, 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 uh, for, for people to, to find out that you were shacking up, that you were living in a cohabitational union, but yet you were not formally married. That used to be that never heard of. Those types of sins and the types of sins of others are, were kept in the closet and they were not, not to be spoken of. Even Paul talks about that in the book of Romans, chapter number 1, uh, at, the, uh, at the last part there uh, in his condemnation on this type of lifestyle. He says, uh, and even in verse number 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are inconvenient or that are not convenient. That reprobate means not approved, not approved or un unapproved of. Being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication and wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. My little grandson called me the, uh, this this week and said he he got saved. I praise the Lord for that. I said, what are you going to do next? And he got real quiet on the phone. He said, uh, well, uh, read my Bible. I said, well, that's a good start. I said, how about obeying your parents? Start with that. That's a good start for a young person that's just got saved. It goes on to talk about without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. We used to didn't, didn't see those things. We didn't talk about those things in public because it was just not acceptable conversation. But now, in our society, there is no seriousness taken about sin. Oh, well, we can just steal that, or we can just cheat on that, or we can just lie about that. Oh, it's just a little white lie. Lies, a lies, a lies, a lies, a lie. I remember growing up as a young boy, my grandparents were from the mountains of North Carolina, and I remember that... Uh, I would use euphemisms. Euphemism is basically a curse word or, or a word changed in order to, to mean a curse word without sounding like a curse word. Uh, darn it and those types of things. And I would say that and my grandmother, my grandmother would say, you might as well have said the real thing because that's exactly what you meant. Because we don't take sin seriously in our life. Sin is a destroyer. Man was born to sin. Man was a sinner by birth and is responsible to God. And as a sinner by practice, he's held responsible to God and to others for his actions. Take those that break man's law on top of God's law. Let's use, for example, that that person is a sinner not only by nature, but he's a sinner by practice. He practices lawlessness, and now he's going to become responsible not only to God, but also to the laws of the land that he has broken. We become responsible to God not only for our self, not only for being a sinner by nature, but also a sinner by practice. That's why we, we repent daily. Paul says, I die daily. Repentance is a daily thing. It's not a one-time thing. We don't just, just bebop down the aisle with some crocodile tears and fall down at an old-time uh, supposedly Baptist altar and start confessing all of our sins and say, I've, I've repented. I'm good to go for the rest of my life. No, we're daily turning away from sin, turning and going opposite of sin, contrary to sin and sin's nature, and we're walking in accordance to God's way and God's law. Because our natural person, our nature, wants to go contrary to God's law. That's why we repent from the evil way towards Yahweh on a daily basis. Repentance is a daily thing. We're always making a choice to follow the Lord because inevitably our mind and our heart, as Jeremiah says, is deceitful and desperately wicked and we're going to want to follow that which goes against God's way. When we talk about what sin is, we see that sin is three things. There's three things that we want to talk about today of what sin is. First of all, sin, as we find in Scripture, is a transgression of a divine command. Sin is a transgression of a divine command. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Hosea, chapter 6. 
And we'll look at verse number 7. Hosea chapter 6 and verse number 7. The Bible says, But they like men have transgressed the covenant, there have they dealt treacherously against me. Sin is a transgression of a divine command. In the garden, in the garden, it was a divine command. You can have anything of any of these trees, but do not touch that tree over there. Don't do that. Don't look at it. Don't lust after it. Stay away from it. Now, in our nature, not justifying who we are, but when we're told that we can't have something, what does that cause us? We want it that much more. You're on a diet. You know, I know many of you, you're going to finish up the holiday seasons in the month of December and you're going to have gained 20 pounds and you're going to have be wearing your, your sweat 30, my wife said 30, 30 pounds. And you're going to go on a diet every year, New Year's, go set your New Year's resolution, you're going to go on a diet. And then someone says, well, on your diet, you can't have that, and you can't have that, and you can't have that. Well, what do you want more than anything? You want that which you're not supposed to have. <laughs> That's our nature. That's just the way that we're made up. Sin is a transgression of that divine command. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 9 and verse number 7, Deuteronomy chapter number 9 and verse number 7, of course, Deuteronomy is a recap of God's Torah, God's commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse number 7, the Bible says, Remember and forget not, how thou provokest Yahweh thy Elohim. Let me make sure I got the right verse. Yes. Yahweh thy Elohim, thy God, to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came to this place. Ye have been rebellious against Yahweh. It is a transgression of a divine command. Sin is a transgression. God said not to. And it's a boundary set by the Lord. There's boundaries. Remember, I, I talked about last week and I, I, in, in prior uh, uh, broadcasts about the boundary that the Lord sets for us like a fence in a backyard of a property owner and he sets it out for his animals, for his, for his pets, for his dogs. Sin binds us like a chain to a tree. But a, but a loving master builds a fence for his animal and releases him from that chain and gives him freedom to run within the confines of that fence. Now we would never, ever, 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 ever condemn that owner and that, uh, that uh, pet owner for locking his pet in that fence. No, because that fence serves two purposes. It's a boundary. It tells that, that pet where they can go, how far they can go, and at what boundaries are their limitations and their liberty. But not only is that boundary for them to, to give them boundaries as to where they go, but it's also boundaries for those things to come in to hurt them. Yahweh, God has set boundaries in his word and in his law for us to live within the confines that we can have liberty therein. The Bible says that the law is liberty, that I have freedom in, in, in God's law and God's commandments. Yeshua said, you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. And yet, the boundaries also keep the bad things from coming in and attacking me and doing me damage, just like that fence keeps the bad things out from hurting that pet and that animal. Sin is a transgression of that, that divine boundary. We've gone over the boundary, gone beyond the boundary, gone beyond the limitations. That's, that's what sin is. Sin broke and transgressed that divine command. But then there's, there's a second thing that sin is. Sin, secondly, is the denial of divine authority. R remember back in the garden when, when Yahweh told Adam and Eve, you know, you could have this and this and that. And in chapter number three, Lucifer comes around. Satan comes around and he tells her, God hath not said, thou shalt not. Basically, he told Eve, God's lying to you. He, he's, he don't mean that. That divine authority and breaking that divine authority and denying that divine authority is akin to spiritual anarchy. Lawlessness. Let, let's, let's look in 1 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 9. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 
uh, and verse number 9. <clears throat> The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the wicked and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves in mankind, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Let me give you an example. Driving out on the highway, the speed limit is 65 miles an hour. You set your cruise control to 65 miles an hour, boom. You are, you are within the confines of that speed limit. Guess what? The law in that point is not for you. You are not breaking that law. But those that are ripping by you at 70 and 75 miles an hour, that law is for them because they are breaking that speed limit. It's the same, same thing. When we consider that sin is a denial of divine authority, basically we're telling God, I don't have to do this because I'm under grace. Guess what? They were under grace in the garden. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Abraham found grace. Isaac found grace. Jacob found, found grace. Nehemiah found grace. David found grace. All of these were all of these found grace in the Lord, but yet they still were responsible to God's law and God's commandments. Sin is a denial of divine authority. Basically, we're saying that we do not have any authority, or God does not have any authority over our life. That's what that means. The basically, when we have sin in our life and we, we accept sin and, and sin becomes acceptable in our life, we're saying God's authority means nothing, God's commandments means nothing, God's word means nothing. Of course, this would be the day that I forgot to turn my ringer off on my phone. I broke my, I broke my own requirement, amen? When we deny God's authority, that's, that's, that's lawlessness and spiritual anarchy. When you see the word, the word iniquity in the Bible, the word iniquity literally means lawlessness. When we look back at that verse of Scripture that we've looked at before in the book of Matthew, chapter number 7, look there if you would, Matthew chapter number 7, and you can do this, I, I encourage you to do this in your own study, and study the Word of God on your own, but Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 23 says, Then will I profess of them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That word iniquity means lawlessness. Lawlessness. In Psalm chapter 6, verse number 8, Yeshua was quoting Psalm chapter number 6, verse number 8. Depart from me, all ye workers of lawlessness or iniquity, for Yahweh hath heard the voice of my weeping. When we consider that sin is not only a transgression of a divine command, you have been told, do not, but then also it is a denial of divine authority. We're saying we don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that Great point was made by one of our brothers when someone was talking about uh, being responsible to the law of God. And they said, well, I don't have to do that anymore. So basically you're saying stealing is okay. Adultery is okay. Lying's okay. Well, no, 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 no. Those, those, well, that's part of the law. That's part of the law. 1 John 3, 4, as we said before, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law or a transgression of God's instructions. His instructions, instructions for life. Sin is a transgression of a divine command. Sin is the denial of divine authority. Do you know that someone's always going to tell you what to do? I've, I've told this story before. I, I joined the military when I was about 18 years old right after President Reagan was elected. And uh, I joined up in December and I went active in February, February 2nd of 1981. I joined December of 1980. And um, I was working for a company before that called Ecker Drug, Drug Store, uh, Ecker Drug Company. And I had worked for them for a number of years since I was about 16 years, years old. And uh, I was, had taken the management training and at that time was the youngest management candidate 
uh, for Ecker Drugs and went through their assistant manager's training, you know, flying colors. You know, they were was looking to take a promotion. They had two stores in our town, and I was going to become the assistant manager, or I'm planning on becoming the assistant manager at one of the stores across town. And when it come down to it, they decided that. I couldn't be the manager because I was too young and they didn't think that I had enough experience in order to handle the position that I did great on my training, but I just didn't, I just, you know, just did not have the experience. Well, I got mad, typical teenager, typical 18 year old. I got mad and I joined the army because I just was tired of people telling me what to do. Is that not just the dumbest thing in the world? Because I found out that once I got in the army, Everybody who outranked me told me what to do. I mean, I was being, I, I had more bosses and more people over me than I had before. Someone's always going to be an authority over you. From the, from the person that you work for, even if you're a business owner, your customers are in authority over you because you're trying to keep your business going so that you can uh, um, make your bills. You're out on the highway. You're out on the the uh, the, the the roads. That uh, that police officer, that highway patrolman, th those people uh, that are that are supposed to to uh, uh, uphold the law and to uh, keep the law in order. Th those people are going to have authority over you. You go to a court of law and stand before a judge. That person is going to have authority over you because if you don't think that they do, and they lock you up and throw you in the in the hoose gal and throw away the key, you're going to know different. We're always going to have someone over us in authority. And no matter what, to the lost or to the saved, to the believer or the unbeliever, Yahweh, God, Elohim, the creator of, of the universe, is in authority over all. And when we commit sin, and when we say, you know, it's just a little sin, or we transgress the divine command and we deny divine authority. But then there's a third thing also. Not only a transgression of a divine command and denial of divine authority, but sin is a failure to attain a divine standard. Now, a standard is basically a, a missing the mark. If any of you have ever gone hunting, you've ever gone, gone target practice, target shooting, you've ever used a bow and arrow, you've... It, uh, and and you you sight your uh, when we was in the military we sighted our rifles in. Uh, you go out to the range if you're a concealed carry permit holder. You go out to the range and you you shoot your weapon uh, and uh, in order that you can you know get get it you know get sighted in and make sure that you're shooting straight. When when we sin we fail to attain that divine standard and we fail to to hit the mark. Like throwing darts, you're always shooting for the bullseye, the bullseye, the bullseye, because that's where the most points are. Sin keeps us off the bullseye and keeps us off the mark. We have a divine standard, and that standard is God's law. That standard is God's divine instructions, God's word. We preach, many of our my pastor friends and preacher friends, we preach that this is the whole word of God, but then all of a sudden we say, but these parts in the front of the book, they don't, they don't apply to us. We only go to the back of the book. If all of God's word is our standard, then all of God's word is our standard, period. And when we sin, we, we fail to attain that divine standard. We fail to miss the mark. We go back to our, our verse that we read earlier in Romans chapter number 3 and verse 23. Romans chapter number 3 and verse 23. Everyone knows that verse of scripture. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have missed the mark. Took the word sin and just put missed the mark. For all have sinned or all have missed the mark and come short of the glory of God. That's what sin is. Sin is a failure to attain the divine standard. God has set a standard. And guess what? No matter how hard we try, no matter how, 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 how we subject ourselves, no matter how much we're going to fail. That's why Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, has met the standard for us that we may find grace in time of need. That we can have faith in Him, 
put our faith and our trust and our life in His hands, walk according to His law, when we fail, as John said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah the righteous, and He is the propitiation for, for, for the world. I'm going to mess that up, so I better, I better look it up and I better read it exactly what the Bible says. 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 9. We'll just go verse number 9. Verse 8, if we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby, watch this, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his Commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The divine standard that was set by Yahweh, by God, by our Creator, was his law. Not the law of the Pharisees, not the law of the Jews, not the law of the Gentiles, not the law of the Roman Catholic Church, not the law of the Baptists, not the law of the Lutherans, not the law of the Protestants, not the law of modern religion, not the law of the English, not the law of the Spanish, not the law of the French, the Russian. The law of Yahweh Elohim is the only one that sets the divine standard. We were talking of this morning uh, after our Bible study. We had Bible study this morning. And we were talking this morning about the fact that we as American Christians have made our own sets of sins. But let me give you an example. Uh, we've, we've said that smoking is a sin. Drinking alcohol is a sin. Wearing the wrong kind of Clothes is a sin. Those things are not listed as sins in the Bible. There is a there is some liberty to have alcohol. It's not the drinking of alcohol that's a sin. It's being drunken that's sin. Smoking damages your body, but so does overeating and eating the wrong things. Uh. I, I, I've been told that you know if I don't wear a white shirt and tie to church on Sunday, that's a sin. If I don't go to church on Sunday, that's a sin. That's not in the Bible. But guess what is in the Bible? Keep my feast days, seven of them. For in not doing so, you transgress the law. Don't eat that which is unclean. Leviticus chapter number 11. That is in the Bible. Not to eat pork and ham and bacon and sausage and shellfish and catfish. That which does not have fins and scales. And that which does not chew the cud and split the hoof. That is in the Bible. That is a sin. Not going to church on Sunday is not a sin. But not worshiping on Sabbath is a sin. We've created our own level of sin. Well, it's a sin not to do this. And, and this group over here, this is sin. And this group over here, this is sin. And this group over here, this is sin. And what sin for the Catholics might not be sin for the Baptists. And what sin for the Baptists might not be sin for the Lutherans. And what sin for the Lutherans might not be sin for the, you know, all the other groups out there. Are you following what I'm saying? We have dismissed God's standard and we've made our own standard. You know that passage of scripture where the Lord talked about, where Yeshua talked about to the Pharisees about how they they made for doctrines commandments of men. They denied the word of God and made their own doctrines. Basically, it's called the Talmud. It's the Pharisees' law. That's the law Paul rebuked in in the in the Word, not the law of God, but the law of the Pharisees. They added things to God's law in order that they would not violate God's law. One of them, the, you'll find this interesting. I'm, I might have used this before. It was unlawful and a sin to spit on the ground on Sabbath. 
for your saliva may germinate a seed in the ground and something may grow of it, thus you would be guilty of working and doing agriculture on the Sabbath. We've done the same thing in our own society, in our own American culture. We've done the same thing. Well, you're not wearing a white shirt and a suit to church. You're, you're, you're sinning. There was a time in, in here in North Carolina that guys would, would preach against these. Of course, I can't see. I can only see certain distances with, with these. Wire rimmed glasses. You were a sinner if you wore wire rimmed glasses. You were a sinner. I heard it preached on the radio here years ago before I left to go to Kansas. You wore Nike tennis shoes. You were a sinner. If a woman wore a pair of pants, she was a sinner and she was going to hell. Heard it. Heard it preached. Heard it on the radio. If you didn't follow our rules and regulations and jump into our knot hole and jump into our hoops, then you were a sinner. But the Bible says a man knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him and his sin. And the Bible's very clear about what is sin. And we've violated God's law and we've dismissed God's standard. His standard is His law, not our law. That's relativism. Well, that, uh, the, that's not the way I interpret that. It doesn't matter how we interpret it. God's law is, is set in stone. This is God's law, period. This is the boundary. This is the divine command. This is the, the divine standard. The boundaries that the Lord has set for us. And when we violate those boundaries, we could commit sin. Thankfully, we have a Savior who has given us grace and mercy. What is the Bible says in John chapter number 1 about that grace and mercy? John chapter number 1, I believe it's verse number 17, where it says, for the law, or the Torah, was given by Moses, grace and Torah, or grace and law, or grace and truth, came by Yeshua Messiah. Moses couldn't give grace. Moses was not God. Moses had no authority to give grace. He had no power to give grace. All he could do was to uphold the law that he was given and to enforce the law as, as, as he was given. Only Yeshua Messiah has the ability to give grace. Do you, do, you, do you understand what grace and mercy is? It is to the privilege of our God as to whether he wants to show grace or not. He's not bound to show us grace. He is not under any requirement whatsoever to show us grace. But he chooses to if we are repentant and we turn from our wicked ways. If we confess and we believe, but he's not going to just give us grace and mercy if we're not penitent. I I have a weakness and drives my mother crazy. I I love the the TV show Mash. You know it's it's army. You know it's stupid. Uh, you know it's got some things in there that's that's questionable. But I just you know I just I grew up with it in the in the seventies. I love to watch watch Mash. Well, Father Mulcahy, you know, the Catholic priest, this guy on the episode, he was pretending to be someone else. He had, uh, one of his buddies had died, and his buddy that died had gotten his orders to, to leave Korea in two weeks. He was going home. Well, the buddy died. Well, the guy got scared. He took his buddy's dog tags. He took his orders, and he pretended to be him. He gave the dead friend his dog tags, and so it, it was a whole switch, switcheroo. The dead guy was Jewish and uh, the live guy was Catholic and so Father Mulcahy comes to, to speak to him uh, and talk to him about Judaism. Well, the guy gets under conviction and he confesses to the, to the priest that he's not the guy and, and it's all a mix-up. And so he's, he asks Father Mulcahy to give him penance. Now we know penance is that's a Catholic thing. It has nothing to do. There's no man can give us forgiveness of sin, okay? But but he asked for penance. And Father Mulcahy said, I'm not going to give you penance because you're not penitent. You're not repentant. And he said, you've got to give me penance. He said, no, I don't. You are not repentant. And can I say to you today, friend, that Yahweh's not going to give you grace and mercy if you're not repentant. Yo, you can you can confess all day long and you can you can tell all the things you've done wrong, but if you have no desire to change and no desire to turn Turn from your wicked ways if you have no desire to follow the, the mandate of 2 Chronicles 7.14, then, then Yahweh has no obligation to give you repentance and to give you forgiveness of sin. 
Only for those who are repentant. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and then will I forgive their sin and then will I heal their land. But sin is a transgression of, or, or, or a failure to attain that divine standard. And God's law is that divine standard. And we can't get there except through Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ, the righteous. But it still doesn't change the fact that we have a responsibility to walk according to His ways and according to His laws and according to His mandate. Can I say to you that if it was a sin in the Old Testament, it's still a sin today? If it was an abomination in the Old Testament, it's still an abomination today? Abomination means that which is disgusting and that which is sickening. You know, uh, eating unclean meats was an abomination. Women wearing that which pertained to a man and, and, and a man wearing that which pertained to a woman was an abomination. I know there'll be those that will talk about pants and things, but that's not what that means. The Bible's very clear about those things that are abomination. But the Bible also says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That's the standard in which we must live by. John wrote in 1 John in chapter number 1 where I was reading before, he started off that whole part talking about the light. And he says there in verse number 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. He didn't lie. We lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, and what is the light? What did Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 23 say? For the commandment is a lamp and the law, you hear that? The Torah is a light. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Yeshua Messiah, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. What is the light? The light is the law. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law or the Torah is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. What is it that Paul said there concerning those instruction? All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Sin is a transgression of a divine command. It is a denial of divine authority. It is a failure to attain a divine standard. But we can have forgiveness in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, our righteousness. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeshua said in John chapter number 14, verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Sin. Sin. Sin is a transgression of God's law. It's a transgression of God's command. And I hope and pray today that, that you understand this and understand that we need to have that scriptural view of sin's nature so that we can have a scriptural view of sin's remedy. Does me following the law of God make me any less of a sinner? No. No, I'm still, I'm still frail and I still make mistakes and I still, I still make bad choices. But I'm attempting to walk in the light. I don't, I don't follow the law of God to be saved. I follow the law of God because I am saved. Because I have had a relationship with Yeshua Messiah, with Jesus Christ. I have chosen to walk in His light and to walk in His way. I have chosen to walk in accordance to His boundaries. He set His boundary, His law, His guidelines for my safety and for my benefit. For they are the way of life. But if I choose to go outside that fence, then I go outside of His boundary and he's not obligated to help me out. He's not obligated to bail me out of my messes. 
Many times he does because of his grace and mercy. But if I choose to disobey him, then I am going to be responsible to handle and take care of my own actions. Don't blame God because don't blame God because you got in a mess because of something you did sinning. That's like the that's like the young lady getting or or the parents of the young lady getting mad because she got pregnant out of wedlock. God had nothing to do with that. That was choices. Or someone getting mad at God because they got a speeding ticket. God had nothing to do with, do with that. Or to get caught drunk driving. Uh, the Lord had nothing, definitely nothing to do with that. Or uh, blaming God because Donald Trump got elected. <laughs> we blame him for everything. He gets, he gets all the blame and very little credit. He's going to give us the the he's going to give us the results of our sin. He's going to let us live in our sin. It's kind of like the old saying, "You make your bed, lay in it." If you want to have good results in your life, make good choices. If you want to have good results in your life, that it doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect and rosy and apple pie. And but if you want to have good results, make good choices. Make good choices on the food you take in. Because you can eat unclean and therefore you're breaking God's law. Make good choices on the things you celebrate. Here we're coming into the holiday season of our country. Christmas is not a biblical holiday. Hanukkah is not a biblical holiday. I encourage you to study it out. Seven festivals and seven times the Lord gave us feasts where we are to celebrate and where we are to participate in holy days. Make sure that you're not sinning against the Lord and sinning against His command. Today's Sabbath. Today's a day that we're set aside. The Lord remembered the seventh day and He blessed the seventh day and hallowed the seventh day and made it holy. Not the first day. First day is on Sunday. Seventh day is on Saturday. Make sure you're not sinning against the Lord by not giving Him His Sabbath. If you go back and say the Word of God, you'll find that that's why... Israel, for 70 years after they took the land over under Joshua, for 70 years they did not honor God's Sabbath, so, so therefore they lost the land. Sin. What is it? It's a transgression of a divine command. It's the denial of divine authority. And it is a failure to attain a divine standard. My prayer for you today is that you'll recognize the sin that's in your life. That you'll repent and turn from your wicked ways. You'll confess before a holy God. Believe on the Lord. Believe on Yeshua Messiah. Trust in Him. Trust in the finished work on the cross of Calvary. And begin to walk in His ways according to His law, Yahweh's law, according to His divine standard. And if we sin... We confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we'll just repent and turn from our sinful ways. Well, may Yahweh bless you today is our prayer. We thank you for joining us and being a part of our meeting today. Do continue to pray for us. It's been a rough week, hard week, long week, but we're thankful for Yahweh's grace and for his mercy in our life. We ask you that you would uh, join us again next week for Sabbath teaching at 2.30. Uh, check us out on YouTube if you'd like to see any of these services again, any of these messages again. We have a YouTube channel, uh, Pastor David L. Jones on YouTube. Uh, just uh, go and search those things and you can uh, watch any of those uh, in its entirety uh, that we have recorded uh, over the, the past year. And uh, you can check those out. Send us a nice message, if you will. If you got something ugly to say, do that privately, please. Or call me and let's talk about it. But uh, our prayers for you. I would like to, to, to say something just real quick. Uh, our friend, Brother Sam Bynum, uh, his wife, Karen, dear friends of ours from Kansas. Uh, Brother Sam was a good pastor there at uh, uh, Ulysses, Kansas. Spent about 35 years, I think 32 or 35 years there. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful family. Uh, Miss Karen is struggling with some health issues. 
uh, major health issues. Uh, I would ask that you pray for Karen Bynum, those of you that know her, that know our broadcast and know our ministry, you know Sam and Karen. And I would ask that you just pray for them, reach out to them, send them a card, send them a nice little note or private message them, let them know you're thinking about them. But do pray for them. They are having some, Miss, Miss Karen's having some serious, serious health issues. I would ask that you pray for them uh, when you when you go to go to prayer tonight. Also pray for each other, pray for us. We appreciate those of you that have joined us today and those of you that are traveling, those of you that are our way, those of you that are going to be traveling this uh, this uh, this month. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of, a lot of traveling going on. We do pray that uh, the remainder of your 2017 is productive and that you'll keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we prepare for 2018. Uh, 2018 could be the, the, the year that the that Yahweh or, or that Yeshua comes back. Could be the year. Uh, things are moving in that direction and we're seeing a lot of things happening in our society. Uh, we could be getting close to the return of the Messiah. And so I hope and pray that you're prepared and ready for that day. We're going to close our service today with Deuteronomy 6 as we always do. We'll read the Shema, the Hear and Obey. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and we'll read verse 4 through 9. I'll read it from the Restoration Bible, Deuteronomy 6, verse number 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and that shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Numbers chapter 6 and verse number 24. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom, my friends. Peace to you. May Yahweh bless you as our prayer. Pray for us. We'll pray for you. We'll see you next time. Amen. Goodbye.